then we're in the content tab scrolling down to unit one and today we'll do 1.05 Baroque in Spain and France. Right click on the quiz and open that in a new window. Get it started. And then minimize it so that you still have a scroll bar and still can read the question. Size that, kind of bring that over to the edge and let's read those questions. Question one, which statement best describes the French Baroque artist Nicolas Poussin's approach to painting? Is it Poussin recorded landscape scenes exact, exactly as they appeared in nature? Is it Poussin painted stylized figures with exaggerated form? Poussin painted landscape scenes with little emotion or narrative? Or Poussin arranged natural elements to construct idealized paintings? What's your hypothesis? Question two, which characteristic best describes the painting style of Spanish Baroque artist Diego Velázquez as seen in Las Meninas? Is it Velázquez places figures freely within the composition rather than organizing them in geometric shapes? Or Velázquez creates great contrast in light and dark with very few middle tones? Or Velázquez involves the viewer by creating a convincing space and eye contact with the subjects in the painting, or Velázquez painted the figures and background scenery using the smoothest possible brush strokes. What is your hypothesis? And question number three, which of the following best describes how Diego Velázquez illuminated the figures and created a sense of depth in Las Meninas? Is it Velázquez set up a strong spotlight in front of the figures? Velázquez depicted natural light coming from a window? Velázquez used the sfumato technique to create a smoky hazy effect? Or Velázquez experimented with Caravaggio's tenebrism technique? Let's find the answers to these questions in 1.05. Baroque painters in Spain and France created their own styles that drew upon techniques pioneered by earlier Renaissance artists. Nicolas Poussin and Diego Velázquez favored a rich Venetian color palette and drew upon Caravaggio's dramatic use of light and shadow. Yet both Poussin and Velázquez were highly regarded masters in their own right. And here we see a close-up of Las Meninas by Diego Velázquez. She seems to be looking right at the viewer, doesn't she? Mm -mm. Spain during the Baroque period. By the beginning of the 17th century, Spain was a kingdom in decline. Spanish sea power had been dealt a severe blow with the defeat of the Armada in 1588. Spain's navy was thereafter unable to protect the trade routes that transported the wealth of their colonies back to the motherland. In Europe, the Spanish army failed to subdue a revolt in areas of the Low Countries that were once staunchly Catholic but now strongly Protestant. Similar uprisings in other regions stretched Spain's military sources thin and drained the treasury. As a result, Spain would never regain the prominent position it had held during the Renaissance. In spite of the turmoil of the times, or perhaps because of it, Spanish artists created masterpieces that glorified their homeland and masked its problems. After English warships devastated the Spanish Armada in 1588, Spain could no longer protect the overseas routes that once transported riches from her far-flung colonies. Diego Velázquez, born in 1599 and raised in Seville, Spain, Diego Velázquez, is considered one of the finest painters of his time. At the age of 12, he began a six-year apprenticeship with teacher artist Francisco Pacheco and learned to paint in a conservative, idealized style. By the end of the apprenticeship, however, Velázquez had abandoned Pacheco's old-fashioned methods and adopted a naturalist style that was strongly influenced by Italian Baroque artist Caravaggio. During those early years, Velázquez painted genre scenes of every day, people gathered in markets and taverns surrounded by lush still-life arrangements of food and wine, a type of painting popular in Spain during the Baroque period. 
to remember what genre is, an artwork that depicts a scene from everyday life, and still life is an artwork showing an arrangement of objects. At the age of 24, Velasquez received the opportunity of a lifetime, an appointment as court painter to King Philip IV of Spain. With access to the royal art collection and time to travel, Velasquez was free to develop his own magnificent style. He held the prestigious position until his death. Velasquez Las Meninas is a masterpiece of narrative composition. Light and shadow and artistic bravado. On the left side, Velasquez himself stands in front of a large canvas. King Philip's young daughter, Princess Margarita, in the center is surrounded by her attendants, including two meninas, Spanish for maids of honor. One kneels at Margarita's feet, handing her a glass of water. The other attendant bows in a curtsy. Like other Baroque artists, Velázquez wanted to involve the viewer. Many of the figures gaze directly at the viewer. Though it is a two-dimensional painting, it has a convincing illusion of real space. The window at the front on the right illuminates both the foreground figures and the area where the viewer would be standing. What is the subject of Las Meninas? Historians have long debated the meaning of Las Meninas. Velázquez meticulously arranged this seemingly casual moment in time to create an extremely complex painting that can be interpreted in many ways. Is it a self-portrait? Is it a tribute to Princess Margarita or her maids of honor, Las Meninas? Where are the king and queen whose images we see reflected in the mirror on the back wall? Here we can see that mirror and the reflection of the king and queen. Are they posing for Velasquez as he paints their portrait? Or is the mirror reflecting what he is painting on the canvas? Are the subjects looking at you as the viewer? Or are they looking at the king and queen standing in front of the scene? One aspect many scholars agree on is that the painting represents Velasquez's attempt to achieve respect for himself and for his profession. He placed the palace keys on his belt to show the important position he held in the king's court. The red cross on his tunic, added after he finished the painting, proclaims his membership in the prestigious Knights of the Order of Santiago. Light and Shadow Conventions Velasquez used light and shadow masterfully to create structure and accentuate color. In contrast to Caravaggio's dramatic method of painting darks against lights, Velasquez captured the middle tones between dark and light. He applied thin layers of rich color to make subtle forms and added thick impasto touches of white and creams to create striking highlights. Move the slider to explore values in the painting. What is impasto? That's the thick sculptural application of paint that creates a bumpy texture that catches and reflects light. Velasquez also used light to define specific parts of the painting. Natural light seems streams in from the window at the right, casting a beautiful glow over Princess Margarita. Light travels across the whole group, yet it is the princess who is fully illuminated. Velasquez highlighted parts of his own image as well. A second, perhaps reflected, light source comes through the doorway in the back. It cascades down the stairs and into the room, creating a sense of depth and leading the eye past the confines of the canvas. Why do you think Velasquez chose to draw the observer's viewpoint? beyond the artist studio. A complex composition. Velasquez employed simple shapes to organize the complex composition. He divided the room into horizontal and vertical rectangles and placed the mirror, doorway, paintings, and window recesses within the rectangles. 
he organized the figures in a series of pyramidal configuration. A large triangle outlines the group that includes the princess, her maids, and the entertainers. Where else do you see pyramid configurations? Painter to King Philip IV of Spain. Diego Velazquez created the Baroque masterpiece Las Meninas. The painting depicts the king's daughter, Princess Margarita, attended by two meninas, Spanish for maids of honor, and other members of the royal court. Look closely at the people in the painting. Nearest the princess are the two meninas. One hands Margarita a glass of water. The other bows forward in a curtsy. To the right are two court entertainers with a mastiff. Set in shadow behind them are a governess and a male chaperone. A chamberlain pauses in the brightly lit doorway at the back. Reflections of Margarita's parents, King Philip and Queen Mariana, appear in the mirror behind the princess. At the left, in front of a large canvas, stands Velazquez himself, brush and palette in hand. Like many Baroque artists, Velazquez used light to define parts of the painting. Natural light streams in from the window and travels across the group, yet it is the princess who is fully illuminated. A second, perhaps reflected, light source comes through the doorway in the back and cascades down the stairs and into the room, creating a sense of depth and leading the eye past the confines of the canvas. The convincing illusion of space extends beyond the two-dimensional plane of the painting to involve the viewer in the scene. In contrast to some Baroque painters, such as Caravaggio, who paired brilliant lights with deep shadows, Velazquez captured the middle tones between light and dark. In some areas of the painting, such as the face of this menina, he applied thin layers of rich color. In other areas, he added impasto touches of whites and creams to create striking highlights. Impasto is a thick, sculptural application of paint that catches and reflects light. Velazquez organized the complex composition of Las Meninas with simple shapes. Horizontal and vertical rectangles divide the space and frame the mirror, doorway, paintings, and window recesses. Several pyramid configurations organize the figures. In Las Meninas, Velazquez took a seemingly casual moment and created a complex work that is difficult to interpret. Is the painting a tribute to Princess Margarita or to her maids of honor? Where do the mirrored reflections of the king and queen come from? Is the royal couple posing in front of the scene for Velazquez as he paints their portrait? Are the subjects in the painting looking at the king and queen, or are they looking at you, the viewer? Why did Velazquez include himself in the painting? Is it merely a self-portrait, or was he asserting his prestigious position as court painter? How do you interpret the painting?